Hello everyone, this is Alex from StoyaChinchow.com and this is the COVID-19 Vaccine Malaysia Update. This is where we recap the latest development of the vaccination program in the country. So what's the deal with AstraZeneca? Is it safe? And before that, let's answer a few questions from the previous video on the Sinovac vaccine. Fantastic Four said, No more selling Soya Chinchow, now selling vaccine. <laughs> Well, actually, we haven't started selling soya chinchow at all. So for those who are outside Malaysia, soya chinchow is actually a refreshing beverage that's made out of um, soya bean milk and also chunks of grass jelly. Well, to answer your question on why we're doing these kind of videos is because um, we're just doing our part to create a more informed society. With a lot of reporting of COVID-19 and vaccines, uh, it can get very overwhelming. With the national immunization program that's happening right now, we've seen a lot of questions like uh, what vaccines are available? How do you register? When can you get a vaccine? So we try to answer those questions by creating these kind of videos. So we want to lay out the facts based on official information so that you know we want to help to educate people about the vaccination program. Send with HT. Thanks for the info, but speak slower next time, please. Okay, I try my best. Nojia Abdel, sorry if I butchered your name. Are these the only two vaccines to be used for the total population of Malaysia? Or will Malaysia will also use Russian and other vaccines too? Well, not just two. Um, Malaysia has procured five different vaccines at the moment. So apart from Pfizer and Sinovac, there's Sputnik V from Russia, AstraZeneca from the UK, and there's also CanSino Bio, which is a one-shot vaccine from China. So a total of five. In Europe, several countries including Germany, Spain, France and Italy have suspended their vaccination program using the AstraZeneca vaccines due to concerns of blood clots. However, at the moment, there's no direct link between the vaccines and these blood clot incidents. About 17 million people in the UK and the EU have received the AstraZeneca vaccines, but there were fewer than 40 blood clot related incidents that have been reported. According to the BBC, experts say that these were no more than the typical blood clot incidents reported in the general population. The WHO has urged these countries not to pause the vaccination program and they must continue to reduce the severe illnesses and deaths related to COVID-19. In Malaysia, AstraZeneca has received conditional approval by the National Pharmaceutical Regulatory Agency, or better known as the NPRA. The NPRA is a regulatory body to ensure that the vaccines are safe and effective before it can be used in Malaysia. According to Kari Jamaluddin, the minister who is in charge of the vaccine coordination efforts, Malaysia will still continue with the procurement of the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is part of our vaccine portfolio. As mentioned earlier, we need established causality for every adverse incident. Anything can happen after someone receives a jab, but not everything is related to the vaccine, so we need to establish that link. Despite the safety concerns, Thai Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha has received the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine and he's the first person to receive it in Southeast Asia. The first batch of 100,000 Finnish Sinovac vaccines from China have finally arrived in Malaysia and it will be administered from the 18th of March 2021. As promised, Kyrie will be the first person to receive the jab and this to prove that the vaccines are safe and he has full faith in the NPRA. Do note that these are Finnish vaccines from China and they are different from the bulk order that we received a few weeks earlier. The bulk order will be filled finished by Pharma Niaga and is still subject to approval by the NPRA. Essentially, this is somewhat similar to the car industry, so you have CBU and CKD units. So the locally bottled uh, Sinovac vaccines, we need to get the green light for the NPRA to ensure that it's safe and effective to be used in Malaysia. And the Sinovac vaccine is the second type of vaccine to be used here after Pfizer. The National Immunization Program is currently underway, however, some people will not be able to get vaccinated. This includes people with severe allergies or those who are immunocompromised. To be fair to these individuals, the government is looking into issuing exemption digital certificates for these individuals. This to prove that they are exempted, not because they refuse to get vaccination, but because they can't do it for health reasons. The national vaccination effort is a huge one covering over 600 locations and the government is looking for healthy Malaysians to help out in the effort. The government has launched the Malaysia Vaccine Support Volunteers or better known as MyVac for people to sign up as volunteers to help out in the program. This is open to all Malaysians aged 18 and above who are healthy and have no exposure to COVID-19 in the past 14 days. And it comes in two categories. This is the medical volunteers who can actually help out in the actual administration of the vaccine and there's also general volunteers who can help out in other things like registration, appointment scheduling, crowd control and temperature screening of people at the centres. If you're interested, you can sign up online on the MyVac website and you can even choose your preferred location. 
according to the FAQ, there's a small token of payment for each volunteer session. Accidentally registered for the vaccine twice on my Suggestra? Don't worry, the app has been recently updated to reflect your first registration date. So if you registered twice, a second time in March, not to worry, it will actually show your first registration date. Just make sure you update it to the latest My Suggestra version. According to Kyrie Jamaluddin, almost 1.4 million people have registered with incomplete information. This includes your health status, whether you are a registered person with disability, and your home address. If you haven't filled up this information, an SMS will be sent to you in the next couple of days. Or you can check right now in the My Suggestra app. Make sure these details are filled so that you can qualify for the vaccination. As of 16 March 2021, a total of 5.7 million people have already registered for the vaccine in Malaysia. This is about 23.7% of the targeted population. At the moment, Selangor leads with 1.66 million people, followed by Johor with 732,000 people, and Kuala Lumpur with close to 517,000 people. Over the weekend, Sarawak claims to have over a million people registered for the vaccine, and more than 600,000 are actually registered through the resident offices. In terms of vaccination, 346,000 people have already received their first dose of the vaccine, which is close to 70% of the targeted 500,000 frontliners in Phase 1. The first batch of people who received the jab on the 24th of February are due to receive their second dose today, and this include the Prime Minister, the Health Director General, and the selected frontliners. That's all for this week's COVID-19 vaccine update in Malaysia. So if you have any question, please drop them down below and we'll try to answer them as soon as possible. And as always, since this is rapidly developing, some of this information may not be up to date, so always tune in to soyachinchow.com or catch the latest update on our YouTube channel. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell icon so that you'll be informed of our next videos. And of course, don't forget to like us on Facebook. This is Alex from SoyaChinchow.com. See you next one. Bye!